Hey there guys, Ian here. Today I'm bringing you another Cinema 4D and After Effects tutorial. And this one is kind of about my um, current intro. Uh, kind of if I show you, if I... Uh, this is my current intro here. And I kind of wanted to show you how to do these lights in the background. Um, kind of without actually... Uh, having to keyframe when it goes behind objects and all that um, and it was actually really simple to do and something I wish I'd found earlier um, so I actually lost uh, the original project file in Cinema 4D for it uh, so I kind of set up a very basic um, replica of it here and I'm actually just going to turn off the fall off um, of the lights there so it's a bit easier to see so this is pretty much uh, the setup there. Uh, there was a floor. Um, the lights were a bit more detailed. Um, and there was more kind of grids everywhere. But in essence, this is how it looked. So I'm going to teach you kind of how to set up the scene in Cinema 4D um, so that you can actually bring it into After Effects and do a lot of work using optical flares. Um, saving a lot of time. So the whole thing is um, understanding where the lights are actually going to be overlapped. Um, so you can see here we have the original object uh, here I believe. So this object here will go in front of it as well as this object and this one and of course the text the whole time as well um, actually goes across the lights in the background um, over here <laughs> um, I quite like the doodle thing it's quite good for showing things off so we don't need to worry about any of um, kind of if I go out of the camera we don't have to worry about any of these three lights here because these will always be completely in the background. It's only um, these ones here we have to really worry about. And as After Effects cannot actually understand uh, kind of cloner objects as of yet, um, the new Cineware thing might, but um, I'm showing you now in R13. Um, how it's done. So we need to make all the cloners editable so it can actually read the lights and so I'm gonna make this one editable. Obviously if you're just using normal lights this doesn't matter. Um, it's only because I kind of sped up the scene using cloners. So you can see now we have, if I search for light, um, a lot of lights in our scene uh, which will go into After Effects. I've got the project file um, in After Effects for the scene, just not the Cinema 4D one. So we have all the uh, lights editable here, which is what we want. And we also just want to um, find the ones which are going in front of the camera. So the text uh, goes in front of the camera. Um, you know, I go back in here, we have this one here which is this object so we want to right click cinema 4d tags compositing object buffer and enable buffer one and i'm just going to copy that tag to the text as well as um, this one and that's it so we have an object buffer set up which if you don't know what it does um, when you render it out it actually gives you another render file with um, basically the alpha channel only um, for whatever object it is and you'll see why it's important um, in a moment so now what we can do um, we don't need to worry about uh, giving them different buffers because this will just create a kind of joint um, buffer uh, 
like one ob uh, one render with all of these combined on it, so we don't have to worry too much. Um, in some scenes, you might have to kind of go uh, to number two or whatever you want. I think yeah, you can pretty much do whatever you like. But for now, uh, in this particular scene, we can actually keep it all on one. Um, to get the actual um, pass out, we need to enable multi-pass in the render settings. Just right click, add object buffer. And even though it doesn't really do anything, I like to just organize it here. So say um, foreground objects. And we also need to go into the save, select a file path. Um, so I would say go here. Uh, to the desktop, whatever, uh, Studio Light, um, Tutorial, and Render, then um, save it as whatever you like. The multi pass image, I use PNGs um, and call this foreground. Um, if you're using different um, render uh, passes, then you might want to just call it something generic like multi pass and then we also want to just tick all of these and then when we click render um, we'll actually get um, something along the lines of uh, all of this so this was the raw render um, from the scene uh, which looks pretty plain you can see the lights had um, a few materials on uh, there was a bit more in the scene than in the one I just created uh, but really nothing that complicated. And then we also have a depth pass which I rendered out um, which I have a tutorial on as well as um, all these render passes. So you can see in my one um, I actually put object buffers on each individual one which I didn't need to do. And you can see we have another one for the uh, lights um, which I believe um, we also have one here. It'll be easier to show you in After Effects. So I'll load the project file up, and we'll kind of sh I'll show you how to use um, optical flares very easily to um, get around this. So some people might just use the generic um, kind of masking and track map, but there is uh, certain techniques which you can use. Just got a phone call, but okay. So basically, when you get the raw render, it'll look something like this. And I actually went and, in fact, I'll start afresh. So we'll create a new composition. Call this. Studio lights, and we shall import render and just the um, the E A A A C, um, and I believe that's this. So we can just double click on it, and this is what you'll get. Um, so this is the uh, file. You can see we have a fair amount of lights um, corresponding to each individual one here. Um, and I believe it's cut out so own, uh, I didn't export any of the lights uh, for some of them just because they will never be seen by optical flares. Um, And yeah, okay, so the next thing to do, or what I like to do, is just hide all of these lights from your actual view down here. So just highlighting them all, and you'll see this little guy peeking over a uh, ledge. If we turn that off and then click this thing here, which is called shy mode, um, we get a much cleaner view uh, down here. And you can also press Command Shift H on a Mac and that kind of toggles the lights on and off in your scene so we get a much nicer um, cleaner view here as well.
So along with um, the render composition, we also have a depth pass, which I talked about here, um, which we won't go through in this video, and also three render passes um, here. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to drag in all the object passes and we're actually going to click um, pre-compose and call this object and go into here and we shall find that one and put it on um, if we okay so we just click add on the top to now you can see we actually have that one um, file with all three on if you did in cinema 4d just use object buffer one for each one this is the kind of view um, you would get and this is what I should have done in the first place but um, wasn't really thinking it through at first so this is what we want and if we go back to our um, one here and solo it out we can see we have it here as well which is exactly what we want um, and yeah so we can get into the actual effect I sorry it's kind of all over the place so I'm just gonna right click new solid and just call this flares and we're just gonna search for optical flares here and we're just gonna change it to track lights and you can see we get this crazy effect and I'm just going to change the mode to screen and you can see now the kind of reason we kind of want it hiding behind the object um, it's not very uh, dramatic and you can see like here when the object goes over um, the flares don't disappear so it's very unnatural as well and it's so simple to change now that we got this um, here um, our object pre-composition we're just going to go to flares foreground layers, layer 1, source, object and we're just going to use alpha invert I believe no, nope. in fact luma is what I believe we want and straight away um, we get the desired effect which is absolutely perfect uh, you can change the radius of the light um, kind of how far it goes over if we were to do invert the light would only be where that is um, so luma is what we want and uh, if you have a look at this scene here um, the flares I used simply were um, if I clear that I believe it was pretty much just one of these maybe with the gamma kind of turned down a bit so something a bit like that uh, turned down there and we have a pretty cool animation which we can then throw on something like this just to kind of spice it up a little bit and kind of randomize them So you get a pretty cool effect with so much less work than you could ever imagine if um, you were to try and hand keyframe this all. Um, I did it once for one animation and took hours of uh, constant kind of keyframing and agony whereas this just saves so much time. It straight away goes behind it even uh, spills over and um, kind of fades away a bit more naturally. The other way uh, which you could do is uh, by using the Luma mat here, uh, sorry, Luma mat inverted. Uh, but as you can see, even though you get the eff uh, sort of effect um, where it's kind of masked out wherever this is. Um, using the foreground layers is infinitely better 
Um, it goes behind all the lights perfectly. Um, kind of fades away naturally. Um, so you can see this is exactly what we want. And then in the other one, all I did was add trap code form to get some kind of particles in the air. Um, then added some color correction just to kind of uh, bring down some of the highlights. And finally, uh, I did actually use, no, I didn't even use uh, depth of field. All I did was then added some motion blur in post-production, which is um, a lot better, in my opinion, than doing it during a render, as it takes far too long. And if you muck it up in the render, you can't do anything about it. Whereas in this, I could um, bring the motion blur up to whatever I liked. And it's probably better to use vectors, but at the moment, they don't really seem to work. So I hope you've enjoyed this relatively long tutorial um, on how to do a simple but incredibly effective and useful um, thing with um, optical flares. I hope you've learned something. This is something I wish I'd learned months ago, so hopefully it's been useful for you and kind of opened your eyes to the power of optical flares. So I hope you've enjoyed it and I shall see you soon.